Hello friends, myself Salil Gadgil. I am a mathematics teacher by profession. I have also authored a few math workbooks. There is a misconception between students that a plus b whole square is simply a square plus b square. In this video, I am going to clear this misconception. Let's get started. So now I am going to explain this misconception. So there is a misconception that a plus b the whole square is a square plus b square. This is what students tend to think and they think like this because they think that a the whole raised to 2 there is a plus sign and b the whole raised to 2 that should suffice that is what they think. So I am going to prove that this is wrong in three different ways. The first way is the algebraic way. So a plus b the whole square can be written as a plus b into a plus b. We know that the square of a number is the number multiplied by itself. So a plus b the whole square will be a plus b into a plus b. If I were to multiply this term by term, a multiplied by a gives me a square. a multiplied by b gives me a times b. Then b multiplied by a gives me a b. And b multiplied by b gives me b square. So I hope that you know that when you open up the brackets you have to multiply term by term which is what I have done over here. So if I now merge the like terms I get a square plus ab plus ab is 2ab plus b square. Do you notice that in addition to a square plus b square there is an additional term which is 2ab and therefore a plus b the whole square is actually a square plus b square plus 2ab. This 2ab is the additional term which you are missing. So this is the algebraic way of showing that this particular formula is wrong. Now let's take a look at the numerical method. If I were to agree to what you have done over here or if I were to agree to this misconception then I can simply substitute a and b by some random numbers and see if this result holds true. So what I have done is I have replaced a by 6 and b by 4. And I have written a square which is 6 square and b square is 4 square on the right hand side. So now if I were to solve this particular number it would be 6 plus 4 which is 10. And 10 square the left hand side would result in 10 square which is actually 100. If I were to evaluate the right hand side 6 square would be 36. 6 square is 6 multiplied by 6 and 4 square would be 4 multiplied by 4 which is 16. Therefore 36 plus 16 gives us a 52. You will now notice that 100 is in no way equal to 52 which means that something is really missing. This particular side needs to have something more so that the resultant will be a 100. And now since we know that that particular additional term is 2ab, let's see if that helps us here. So this is my a and this is my b. So a square plus b square. Let me add another 2ab term over here. So that will be 2 times my a is 6 and the b is 4. So 2 6 are 12 and 12 4s are 48. So let me add that 48 over here. And now you will notice that 52 plus 48 is indeed 100 which is equal to the left hand side. So adding this 2ab term really made the equation hold true. Now let me show this using the geometric way. In the geometric way assume that I have a square of side A. So we know that the area of a square with side A is nothing but A square. So I have highlighted that over here. The area of this shaded square is A square. Let's assume that I have another square which is placed over here whose dimensions are B. 
So the area of this small square is going to be b square. So if you were to find a square plus b square, essentially what you're trying to find is, you're trying to find the combined area of these two squares. So a square plus b square would simply give you the combined area of these two squares. Now let's see what is the meaning of a plus b the whole square. If you observe this diagram here, this dimension is a and the small dimension is b because this dimension is equivalent to this dimension. So the total dimension, the total vertical dimension over here is a plus b if you notice. Is that right? And the horizontal dimension is also going to be similarly a plus b. So now what do you observe? When you find a plus b the whole square, you are actually finding the area of this whole square. So area of the whole, we are finding the area of the whole square because we are trying to find a plus b the whole square and a plus b is the side of the square. So a plus b the whole square gives us the area of the whole square and we are saying that the area of this full square is equivalent to the area of the shaded portion according to this formula. The left hand side is the area of the full square and the right hand side is the area of this, this shaded portion. Is that really true? Aren't we missing some part over here? We actually are. Do you notice that we are missing the areas of these two rectangles in this particular formula? So we notice that there's a difference between the area of the whole square and area of the shaded part and that difference happens to be the area of these two rectangles. The dimension of this, this rectangle is A and B. The dimensions are A by B and therefore the area of this rectangle is going to be AB. Similarly, the dimensions of this rectangle is, rectangle is also A by B. So the area of this rectangle is going to be AB. Now do you observe something? A square plus B square added with these two ABs, that is plus 2AB gives us the area of the whole square. And therefore, you will notice that A plus B the whole square is going to be A square plus B square, which is the area of these two shaded regions along with the area of these two rectangles and the area of these two rectangles is 2ab. Therefore, let us now say that a plus b the whole square is equal to a square plus b square plus there is an additional term which is 2ab and if you write it this particular way then this misconception turns into a formula and this is an identity. So we have converted a misconception into an actual identity which is a plus b the whole square equals a square plus b square plus 2ab. I now hope that in all the three methods you have understood that the misconception was not the right thing to do and we have also rectified our understanding and we have arrived at a very logical conclusion which says a plus b the whole square is a square plus b square plus 2ab. I hope that all these three methods made a lot of sense to you and that you would never ever repeat this mistake. So on the board I have written six problems where I have written a plus b whole square as a square plus b square. Now in this section we are going to complete this particular identity by rectifying the mistake. So what was the mistake? We saw that the 2ab term was missing and we are going to introduce that 2ab term. So a plus 6 the whole square was a square plus 6 square and now we need to add that additional 2ab. So 2 times 6 is 12 so this becomes 12a and now this formula is absolutely correct or this expansion is absolutely accurate. Similarly, b plus 2 by 3 the whole square is written as b square plus 2 by 3 the whole square which was written as b square plus 4 by 9. Now something is missing. The missing part is 2ab and therefore we get 4b by 3 because 2 twos are 4, 4b by 3. So now this completes the answer. c plus 5d the whole square was written as c square plus 5d the whole square. So c square plus 25d square. The term missing here is the 2ab term and now 2 into c into 5d, 2 5s are 10. So the answer is 10cd. In the fourth problem, 10 plus 2 the whole square. So 10 plus 2 is 12 and we know that the square of 12 is 144. So over here if you calculate 100 plus 4 is simply 104. So a square plus b square. So we need to add that 2 a b term 
So two tens are 20, 22s are 40. And now the answer is 144, which is absolutely accurate. Now let's take 100, and 100 plus 5 the whole square, which is 105 square. So if you actually calculate 105 square, it will be 11025. But according to this misconception, we have written it as 100 square plus 5 square, which is 10,000 plus 25. We are missing the 2AB term. So 2AB completes it. So 100s are 200, 205s are 1000. And now you will notice that the answer is very accurate. Similarly, 3a plus 5b the whole square is 3a square plus 5b the whole square. And I need to add a 2ab term here. So 2ab and this is going to be equal to 2 3s are 6, 6 5s are 30 times ab. So I hope that we understood the mistakes that we were doing earlier and we have rectified those mistakes here. I now hope that you are convinced that a plus b the whole square is a square plus b square plus 2ab and that you would never ever repeat this mistake ever again. I do hope that you understood this concept clearly. So I do hope that you found this video interesting. In the next video, I'll come up with a new idea, a new concept. Do like, share and subscribe my video channel and stay connected for more updates. Till then, see you. Goodbye.